Hello, and good morning, or afternoon, whatever, whatever. If you have an authorized version of the scriptures, commonly known as the King James Version, please go ahead and uh, pick it up. Get it. Please turn with me, please, into the book of Matthew, which is the first book of what is called the New Testament. Go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, as, as well as Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, are known as the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is what is known as the Constitution of the Kingdom of Heaven. The Kingdom of Heaven is where the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, will rule and reign from. 4,000 years at his second coming, after the time of Jacob's trouble, which is um, erroneously referred to as the Great Tribulation. Okay, What starts the time of Jacob's trouble, because that seven-year period is for the Jewish people, what um, kicks that off, so to say, is what is known as the redemption of the purchased possession or the catching away erroneously referred to as the rapture, okay? But we can learn something here from Matthew, uh, from the book of Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, as I would like us to look at today. Turn in the authorized version of the scriptures to Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 under verse 14 to start, okay? Please go there with me, please. We read, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And there and there and few there be that find it. So what our Lord here is telling us is quite simply wide wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction. But straight, narrow, is the way that leadeth unto life. Meaning what? Exclusivity. Ah, yes. See, what is known as the Roman Catholic Church, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism is described within the scriptures in the book of Revelation, chapter 17 specifically. Please go ahead and read that on your own time. Um, and that is Satan's church, okay? Satan has put up many counterfeits, many replacements, many different religions that there are, Satan has introduced to many that there are many ways to get to heaven. That there are many paths, not just one. But the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, has said, Straight, straight is the gate, and narrow is the way. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way. And few there be that find it. While Satan and his church, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, and the Jesuit order, there are many paths to God, to heaven, right? 
Islam, which is a creation of Roman Catholicism. Mystery Babylon. Morons, excuse me, Mormonism, also a creation of Mystery Babylon. Uh, Joseph Smith was a Freemason. Jehos, Jehovah's Witnesses. Charles Taze Russell, also a Freemason. <laughs> okay? Just to give, a, give an example, Roman Catholicism itself, which is Baal worship, right? Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, and any ism, I is man. <laughs> there is only one way. But see, a lot of you have been taught that there are many paths, many different ways to reach one end, because the end justifies the means, right? Do you know that's the saying of what is called the Jesuit order? Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. We who are of the Church of the Living God, inaccurately referred to as Christians, we often get called narrow-minded because we refuse to accept any other possible way of going to heaven or knowing God. And you know what? Amen. Hallelujah. I am narrow-minded. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Amen. Amen. It's very simple for us of the church of the living God, dear friend. Okay? We, we believe that God wrote a book. And we believe, those who are of the church of the living God, that the book that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Second Corinthians uh, chapter 3, verse 17. You go look that up, okay? We believe that the book that God wrote in the English language is this, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version, okay? We believe that this is perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God, okay? That's what we believe, okay? We have a standard, we have a perfect standard. And there are those out there who call themselves Christians who make themselves the standard. You know, like guys like John MacArthur. He is his own standard. While all the while telling you that, you know, he believes in the Bible. But there again, unto him, there is no perfect Bible. And you're right. The scriptures are perfect. But see, we who are of the Church of the Living God, we believe that. That we have the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God for us today, given to us in the English language. And I personally, and I've addressed this before, I personally believe that this is what you go to to translate this into other people's languages. Okay? Not going to get off on that. But see, we who are of the Church of the Living God, dear friend, we have a standard. Okay? Because... Narrow is the way, while broad is the way that leads unto destruction. And many go in there at. And why is that? Why is that? Go back to Matthew chapter 7, okay? I, I shut my scriptures. Go back to Matthew chapter 7, or if you're still there. <laughs> Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 on to verse 27. Now remember what we had already looked at in verses 13 and 14 here in Matthew chapter 7. Now, gotta, I got to tell you this. This is before Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? This was still doctrinally under the law. Okay? 
He hadn't died, buried, and rose uh, again the third day according to the scriptures yet. He had not crucified, uh, had not been crucified yet. Okay. Excuse me. This is what is known as a different dispensation. Okay. That is something to keep in mind. But I would like us to read now verses 21 on to verse 27. Okay, he says, our Lord Jesus Christ says, enter ye, uh, verse 13 and 14 again, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. While Satan all the while is telling you there are many paths, when the Lord says there's only one. Straight and narrow. Verses 21 on verse 27. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven, by the way, is always a reference onto the actual physical, literal kingdom that is going to be in Jerusalem. Okay? But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? You, done, you said things, okay? You uh, cast out uh, devils and done so many good things in his name. But what does he say? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, the new there is not that God doesn't know who you are. God knows who every single solitary person. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Never mind, please, what sick mind Freud has said. Okay? A, a person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? God knows of every single solitary person, spirit, soul, and body that is or ever has been. The know there, I never knew you, is a personal relationship with the living God. See, a lot of people can take the name of Jesus Christ upon their lips. They can even say things that they want you to believe proves that they are of the church of the living God. Okay? But at the end of the day, it is a relationship with you and the Lord Jesus Christ on his terms, not your own. Because he, and he addresses that, he addresses that right here in verse 22, where they say, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Look what we have done for you. And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Look what we have done for you. Look at what we have taken upon ourselves to do for you. All for your name. Doesn't that count? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. He refers to their works as iniquity because he didn't know them through a personal relationship. And that is a relationship predicated upon the scriptures, not your feelings. Okay? Verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And that rock is Christ. Okay? I have a video where we, we get into this. Okay? Uh, and if I, I don't remember it offhand, but I will try to remember it and link it in this video. Okay? The rock that the church is built upon is Jesus Christ, not Peter. See, that's what them evil Catholics and Jesuits want you to believe, okay? 
Jesus Christ is the foundation. Okay? He is the rock, not Peter. Okay? Someone telling you that you're dealing with a Jesuit Catholic, get away from him. Okay? But, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock himself. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. See, those of us of the church of the living God, who have faith on our Lord Jesus Christ, for what he did for us because of what we did to him, okay? We have faith on him. We came to him on his terms, broken and contrite. And we trust upon him for what he did on the cross for us. And in brokenness and contrition, we, we fear. And we have cried out for mercy. Because it is the Lord who saves. Okay? <clears throat> but see, we are built upon the rock. And where it says here, the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew. Oh, there are going to come many things as the church of the living God that are going to try you, to test you, persecute you, make you question yourself, which is a healthy, healthy thing. Sometimes, not all the time. Okay? But see, he, lie, he says right here, when the, rains, the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, okay? Things that will come upon you. Okay, from the outside, also from in, from the inside sometimes, okay? And beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock, upon the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Hence, the relationship mentioned in verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Because someone based, their, their, their whole foundation is based upon who? The Lord Jesus Christ. They know him through a relationship. Okay? On his terms, not your own. Because, verse 26, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man. You check out Psalm 14. Or Psalm 53, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, you hear them, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Sand. Sand is what? Grainy. Made up of little tiny microscopic little stones. Peter, by the way, his name means stone. Christ is a rock. The rock. Verse 27. And the rains descended, and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Why? Because their foundation was built, to, built on sand, not a rock. So, amen. We who are of the church of the living God, dear friend, we are very narrow-minded. Very narrow-minded. We're not going to say unto you that, yes, evolution has merit. No, it does not. That's insanity. That's insanity. Jesus Christ is God. And as we have looked at already, if, if you have, in verses 13 and 14, he says specifically that narrow Straight is the way, and narrow, that leads unto life. Meaning, only one way. Exclusivity. 
And see, Satan doesn't want that. He wants many ways except one way, see. Hence, that's why there are so many what they call Bibles out there to confuse you. You don't like the scriptures because they cut you? Oh, go ahead, get a Bible. There are like, what, over almost 300 uh, versions of the Bible, of a Bible out there that you can choose from? Go ahead. But see, the scriptures cut you. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to life. Straight. See, exclusivity. Exclusive. And see, there are those of you out there who do not like that. Oh, no, no. You want an option C. <laughs> when there is no option C, okay? You're either saved or you're lost. You're either of the church of the living God, inaccurately referred to as a Christian, or you're not. There is no middle ground. There is no option C, dear friend. Go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Genesis, which means beginning. Exodus means getting out. <laughs> Exodus chapter 3. I'm going to look at two verses. Exodus chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. And God said unto Moses... Even a lot of you lost people know who Moses is. Okay? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. I am. The perfect statement from one who is eternal, who has no beginning and has no ending. And see, evolution <laughs> tells you that millions and billions and billions of years ago, in a galaxy far, far away, nothing went boop and became something. Big Bang, right? Uh, from nothing came something, just all of a sudden, right? And then millions and billions and billions of years happened. And then a little piece of spit, snap, came out of water. And then that little piece of spit became, what? A fish or a lizard. And then it morphed into a monkey. And then the monkey became... There was a, a member of my immediate family. And I had talked once about this. And, <laughs> and this person, spirit's own body, said unto me, Brad, you need to grow up. I need to grow up. Why? Because I believe the truth that God created the heaven and the earth in six days. And that earth is not millions and billions of years old. I believe in an intelligent creator where you believe that we came from a sniveling piece of snot that morphed from first into a, a fish or a bacteria or whatever and then became a... Yeah. No, you're the one who needs to grow up. You're the one whose head is in the clouds. Thank you very much. And then what do you do? It's like, you can't prove it. I don't need to. See, that's, that's a matter of faith. The proof is out there. But see, you who call yourself an atheist... There are many of you out there who say, I want scientific proof, and it is out there. But yet, if all the proof were given to you, you probably still wouldn't believe. Why? Why is that? We'll get into that. But let's get back to exclusivity. 
And God said unto Moses in Exodus 3, verse 14 and 15. By the way, I like rabbit, especially with hot sauce. Especially with hot sauce. And teriyaki, oh, never mind. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, Jacob is Israel, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. I am. I am who created heaven and earth and the seas and everything in there. He created you from dirt, not from a sniveling piece of snot that after millions and billions of years morphed into whatever. No, 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 no. Whether you like to accept this or not, you're going to eventually. Um, you are a created being, being, just like Satan is. Go to Deuteronomy. That is the last book of the what is known as the Torah or Pentateuch. Deuteronomy means second law, giving of the second law. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verse 39 on to verse 43. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 39 on to verse 43. See now that I, even I am he. I am, the statement of an eternal being, I am he. Singular. Singular, one God made up of spirit, soul, and body. You know, you've heard that we as man are made in the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body. See, Catholics tell you that God consists of three divine persons and a person is a spirit, soul, and body. So three gods make one God. Boop, that's, whoa, that's crazy, okay? Beware of these people. Okay? And yes, I can assure you that Catholics are Christians. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill. I make alive. I wound. I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. God kills? Uh, he is God. Who are you? Who are you? You're dust. You're nothing. What are you going to do? What, you, what are you going to say to God? He created you, whether you want to accept that or not. You are his creation. What are you going to say to God? Oh, you might have a list, you think, right? But when you're standing at the great white throne of judgment, <laughs> and it says here, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Nobody can deliver out of God's hand. But yet your Darwinism and your own rationale, they have God said. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I whet my glittering sword, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, interesting, and mine hand take hold on judgment, God is a God of judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. God's love is not for you if you hate him 
and you hate him because you reject of what he did for you because of what you did unto him. You're not going to get away from that as much as you would like to. You can go and hide yourself under your little evolutionary little rock. But unfortunately, before the time it may be, it'll be too late for you. You're not getting away from this. You're not getting away from this. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives, from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. God, that, see, that says right there that God is not only a God of judgment, but also God is a God of distinction. He created things to be separate, distinct, because he likes variety. You got Catholicism trying to blend everything together and make it a mess. God is exclusive. And go now to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. Chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. Whoops, oops, oops, went, went too far, I beg your pardon. Isaiah chapter 44. Verses 6 on to verse 8. Isaiah chapter 44, verses 6 on to verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Hmm. Hmm. Hold your place here and go to the book of Revelation. Uh, most of you will know that the book of Revelation is the very last book in the scriptures. If you're not using the authorized version of the scriptures, but using a Bible, you're going to have some problems here. Revelation chapter 1, verse 11. Revelation chapter 1, verse 11. This is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, speaking. Saying, uh, let's read verse 10 and 11, beg your pardon. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega. What does that mean? The first and the last. That's what Alpha and Omega means. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it on to the seven churches which are in Asia. Seven churches. Bodies of people, uh, not buildings, okay? That's what Catholics tell you, that churches are buildings. No, churches are people. You are, if you are saved, born again, converted, of the church of the living God, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost because God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that spirit, the Holy Ghost dwells within you. Okay? And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardius, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. What I wanted us to look at is uh, right here in verse 11 saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Jump down here and let's read verses 17 under verse 18. Now this is John the Apostle, okay? Who wrote, who uh, the Lord used to write this, okay? And John the Apostle, okay? And when I saw him, when John the Apostle saw our Lord Jesus Christ, I fell at his feet as dead. And people, the, these Christians, okay, they like to say things to you that, you know, well, when I see Jesus, it's just going to be a great homecoming. Run up to him, give him a big bear hug, give him a high five. Uh, no, no. 
and you lost people, you're going to go there with your arms crossed. Like, I got questions for God. Yeah. Yeah. No, John fell down at his feet as if he were dead. What do you think you're going to do, tough guy? <laughs> and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. And when you look back in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6, Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. The God who is of the Old Testament is the same one of the New Testament. One God consisting of spirit, soul, and body. Okay, Some Jewish people will like to make this distinction like, well, the God of my book, the Old Testament, is a different God than the God of their book, meaning us Gentiles, the New Testament. The scriptures... The, the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, it's a Jewish book. It's a Jewish book. It was not written by Catholics. Catholicism did not give us the scriptures, dear friend. Please, don't believe anything that comes from Catholicism. Please, for your own sake. Let's continue in Isaiah chapter 44. From verse 7. And who as I shall call and shall declare it and set it in order for me since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let them shew on, let them shew on to them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid, have not I told thee from that time, and have I and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Exclusivity. Look at that verse. Don't look at me. Look at look at the verse. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Very exclusive. Very exclusive. One God. Not three divine persons that make one God. <laughs> That's insane. No. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. If you, if you find this channel, Lord willing, um, check out the playlist, Jesus is God the Father. And also check out the playlist on Catholicism. Okay? Go now to Isaiah chapter 45, verses 5 and 6. Isaiah chapter 45, right across the page. Verses 5 and 6. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Let's read verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Isaiah chapter 48. Isaiah chapter 48. Beginning at verse 16 on to the close of the chapter. Come ye near unto me. 
Hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there am I, and now the Lord God, and now the Lord God and his Spirit has sent me. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go, because narrow is the way, straight is the way, and narrow is the way that leadeth on to life, and there be few that find it, but broad is the way that leadeth on to destruction, and many go in thereat. There's only one way, people. There's only one way. Oh, that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as the river, as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. God gives us a choice. We are not forced against our will to go to heaven or go to hell. I addressed that in a video about what is called Calvinism. If I can remember that, I'll try to put that in this video as well. Okay? I'll try to. Sometimes I forget about these videos that I say I'm going to put in the description box, just so you know. Okay? Thy seed also had been as the sand, and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. Go ye forth of Babylon, flee ye from the Chaldeans. With a voice of singing declare ye, tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth. Say ye, the Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. And they thirsted not when he led them through the deserts. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He claved the rock also, and the waters gushed out. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. If you're not saved, if the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, hath not saved you, you're wicked. There's no option C, dear friend. You're either saved by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, or you're lost. You're either going to heaven because the Lord has saved you, or you're going to hell. There's no middle ground. God is exclusive. Very exclusive. And about this right here, verse 18. Okay, where it says, Oh, that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. See, God does not force you into salvation, nor does the devil force you to stay away from our Lord Jesus Christ. You have a choice. You do have a choice. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 32, just one verse. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 29. In the book of Romans it says, professing themselves to be wise, meaning having the fear of the Lord, they became fools. And the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You think you're so smart because you believe in a fairy tale such as evolution? Or you're not re religious, but you're agnostic? What do you think agnosticism is? It's a religion. <sighs> Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verse 29. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. 
your latter end. When you die, there's only two, one of two places you go in. Only one of two. There is no option C. There is no purgatory, okay? That's a lie given to you by Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, and her Jesuits, okay? That's nonsense. You're either going to heaven or you're going to go to hell, which was prepared for the devil and his angels. You don't have to go there, but God is not forcing you to do either or. What are you going to do, tough guy? What are you going to do? Go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. There are those out there that says, Jesus Christ never said that he was God or claimed to be the Father. John chapter 8, verses 23 on to verse 24. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are from this world. Ye are of this world. Excuse me. I am not of this world. See, right there, exclusivity. Narrow-mindedness, distinction. We who are of the church of the living God, we are not of the world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. See, your life will change once the Lord saves you. Watch out for people who says that they ain't no change whatsoever. I mean, <laughs> very careful of those people. Okay? They're lying to you. Hey, come here. They work for Roman Catholicism. They're most likely Jesuits themselves. Between you and I. Okay? Verse 24. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And that was, we already looked at in Deuteronomy chapter 32. Shall we, hold your place here, okay? Hold your place here. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Hmm. Is Jesus Christ God or one of three gods? See, Trinitarians make Jesus the one in the middle. One of three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. And he says right here in verse 24, don't look at me, look at the book. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And back in Deuteronomy chapter 32, <clears throat> where it says in verse 39, see now that I, even I, am he. Oh boy. And there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. And here we see Jesus Christ saying, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. What does that mean? Jesus Christ is the Father. How is that possible? The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. The Father is the soul. The Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, is the body, spirit, soul, and body. One God, spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons that make one God. Okay? That's what that means. But let's continue in John chapter 8. Go to verse 43. And then we're, we're, we're going to read together from verse 43 on to the close of this chapter. Okay? 
<laughs> and those of you in the Church of the Living God, when you encounter some of these atheists, Especially with how it is right now, these days, brethren, sisters, you got to remember. Do as the Lord will. And whatever testimony or witness you give them, they are accountable. And they're going to have to answer. It's not up to you to win an argument with them. Why is that? Verse 4. 43 unto the close of the chapter in John chapter 8. <laughs> Brethren, sisters of the Church of the Living God, why do ye not why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. And incidentally, ye is plural, more than one. Just so you know, okay? Just so you know. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Verse 46. Which of you convinceth me of sin. And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye, remember it's plural, therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. Brethren, sisters, and for, for those of you who are lost who may see this, yeah, there are those of us of the Church of the Living God who do want to take this and just bash you over the head with it. And to, like, wake up! That's not our job to do so. Our job... Job 28, 28, is to be a witness unto you and tell you the truth from the scriptures. We are not the ones who do does the converting. God forbid. God forbid. No. We are ambassadors. We have the ministry of reconciliation, and we also have the word of reconciliation. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled. To God. But there's only one way, dear friend. There's only one way. Let's continue. Then answered the Jews, uh, verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? This is God the Father, God manifest in the flesh. And they were saying of him that he had a devil. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. Remember, the soul of the Godhead. Godhead. Okay? Godhead appears in the scripture three times. You look, you look that up on your own. Okay? I'm not going to tell you. Godhead appears three times. Spirit, soul, and body. One God, spirit, soul, and body. Not the satanic three gods that make one God. That's crazy. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I speak not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now see, eternal death, meaning go to hell. And when you go to hell, you don't die. Okay? Read Mark chapter 9 sometimes. 
beginning in about, oh, verse 40 to the close of the chapter. But make sure, if you're doing that, Mark chapter 9, beginning at verse, oh, 40 to the close of the chapter, make sure you have the scriptures and not a Bible. Because there are those out there who tell you that Jesus never talked about hell. Anyway, then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast the devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. He's referring unto the second death, meaning the one that's going, uh, going to send you to hell. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? Who maketh the style thyself? Who are you? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Remember what we looked at in Exodus? I am. The only statement that an eternal being could make that has no beginning and has no end. I am. Jesus right here called himself the Father. Totally, supremely, God. Do you think that the people, the Jews who he was talking to, understood what he said? Let's finish this verse. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Um, uh, yeah, 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 they, they kind of knew. And I, and go to John chapter 10 real quick. Okay. Go to John chapter 10. Jesus referred to himself as the father. He called himself God. And if you read John chapter four, he even refers to himself as the Messiah. You might hear of a well-fed man in Texas named John Haggy who does the devil salute thing that a lot of lost people like to do, um, who said that Jesus never claimed to be the Messiah. Yeah, read John chapter 4 sometime. Out of the scriptures, not a Bible. Okay? Uh, John chapter 10, verse 33. Okay? Uh, let's read verse 30 on to verse 33 in John chapter 10. I and my Father are one. Spirit, soul, and body. I and my Father are one. That's what Jesus said. Not one in essence. Not one in nature. One God. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father the soul of the Godhead. For which of these works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Yeah, the Jews knew what he said. And they wanted to kill him for it. They wanted to kill him for it. But now, 
Go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Verses 1 under verse 11. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, where I am, you see that? There ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Remember how in Matthew we looked about building a house on either a rock or sand? And he's going to prepare a place for you? At verse 4 he says, And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Now here, here's what's going to bother a whole lot of you lost people. And I know it. <laughs> I've seen it. I've dealt with many of you. Personally. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? You ready? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Ouch, huh? Ouch. I am. Note that. By the way, um, if you ever read the book of John, make sure, number one, that you have the authorized version of the scriptures, known as the King James Version, okay? Um, when you read the book of John, seriously, you know, get your little pen or a highlighter or whatever. Take a note of all the I am's that our Lord Jesus Christ says. Very interesting for you to do. Go ahead. But I am the, the in front of something, making it the definitive article. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That doesn't mean a church building, that doesn't mean a pastor. That doesn't mean a priest because Jesus Christ is our high priest. Okay? That does not mean Lutheranism, Methodism, uh, <laughs> definitely not Catholicism, not Moronism, Mormonism, uh, not the Jehos, Jehovah's Witnesses, not Buddhism, not Hinduism, not Islam. Okay? And if there is any ism, I is man, that I forgot, whoop, oh well, no. This is an exclusive statement made by the exclusive God, I am. I am. One God. One God. Singular. Not three. To make one. No. One God. If ye had known me, verse 7, we're, we're continuing, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Trinitarians love to really twist this. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? Hmm. 
Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the soul of the Godhead? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, the Word made flesh. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. And there it is. Exclusivity. There's only one way. And Jesus Christ made it abundantly clear in verse 6. Excluding all other things, Muhammad, Buddha, Gadi, the Brahma or whatever, Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, Francis, Sosa, all excluded. Oh, and I forgot, Semiramis, the Queen of Heaven, the Roman Catholic Mary. Oh, very big. To the Catholic, of course. There's only one way. Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. There's only one way. But see, go to Genesis, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis means beginning, okay? Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Now, for the church of the living God, uh, those who are saved, born again, converted, most know this. But this video is not intended for the church of the living God, even though it is. Now the serpent, uh, Genesis 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. The serpent, by the way, is Satan. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Did God say that? that you should not eat of every tree of the garden. Look, look at uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Here's what God said. Uh, verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. You can eat of anything. But of but the condition. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. That's what God said. And in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 again, on to verse 5. Now the serpent, Satan, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden, of every tree of the garden, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Neither shall ye touch it. Look at verse 16 and verse 17. Okay, move your eyes that way, or that way, whatever. Uh, to Genesis chapter 2, verses 16, on to verse 17 again. Now look real closely at that. But of the of verse 17 especially, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Did God say you shouldn't touch it? Uh, add e, uh, uh, Eve added to the word. He, she added to it. Because she was put on the spot by Satan came on her kind of unawares, tempted her. See, Satan does that. Satan goes after the weaker vessel. And oh, you feminazis out there, you ladies. Oh, excuse me, you 
women who are feminists. Um, Eve was made for Adam. Woman means of man. Okay? I have a video, a two-part video on the woman of God. Um, you women out there, I suggest you go ahead and watch that. Okay? But, Satan won't go after, he goes after, went after Eve first. He'll go after the woman. He'll go after the man, yeah. But we see here in scripture, he went first after the woman. And where was Adam? Who was there to, who was supposed to protect his wife from this stuff? Where was he? And look at verse 4. Look at what Satan says. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now, that's a lie. Now, and see where our Lord says, thou, uh, For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. It was not an immediate, instantaneous death. Man was originally created to be immortal. But because man disobeyed what God has said, sin came into the world. Hence, death came in. Death was not instantaneous. It was gradual. Okay? But see, Satan was playing off of the thing that, going off of the premise that Eve thought it would be instantaneous. And Satan said to her, you should, ye shall not surely die. Did they die right away? No, eventually they did. But did they die instantaneously? No, but they did. And look at verse five. For God, singular, doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, eat what God said not to, disobey him. And follow your own heart. Then your eyes shall be opened. What is Satan saying here? Okay. God knows. When you disobey him. And go after what your eyes see. Okay. In the day ye eat thereof. Eat of the fruit. Which he commanded you not to do. Though what the actual fruit was. Is a little insignificant. More rather that he said, don't do that. No. Do you like it when someone says no to you? Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. You don't like that. No, because why? Then your eyes shall be opened. Illuminate. Now you can see. What do you, some of you atheists say? Oh, now I have my eyes open because I, 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 because you believe that religion is a lie or whatever. Now you have eyes to see, right? And ye shall be as gods, plural, little g, gods, many. Put an S on there, that, the hell, oh, that means more than one, doesn't it? And, and see, dear friend, the Bibles, not the scriptures, some of them will mess that up and make gods there into singular, that you will be as God. Singular. Again, no, where the scripture says, you shall be as gods. Plural. Knowing good and evil. Meaning, you will be your own God to judge your own path because you disobeyed what God had said and now your eyes are open and now you know what sin and good is according to your own standard, not his. You call yourself an atheist. 
You don't believe in a, a God. Yeah, you do. It's the one that you look at in the mirror. Yourself. That, see, that's, that's why scriptural repentance, being broken of yourself, is so important and necessary for him to save you. Because, see, in accordance with the scripture, what Satan said unto Eve, in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You're your own God. You judge what is good and evil. You will have no man to tell you what to do. Thou shalt not. Good old-fashioned, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, you're your own God. You will judge what is right and wrong. Do you not, you don't realize, but you prove the scriptures right every time you act upon the ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. Every time, Mr. Atheist, <laughs> yeah, every time, Mr. or Mrs. Atheist, you say, man wrote the scriptures. Yeah, hath God said? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Why can't I be a Christian and a Buddhist? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. <laughs> yea, hath God said, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, every time you atheists snuff your nose at the scriptures, and his church, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, which is the ground and the pillar of the truth. Every time you snuff your nose at the Lord in any way, shape, or form, you're proving the scriptures right. Mr. Bell, I hope you do see this. You Stuck up, arrogant twit. I really do. I really do. Shh. We'll leave that one lay. So there you have it, dear friend. Put that in your put that in your pipe and smoke it, huh, buddy? Every time you atheists claim to be an atheist, number one, you're lying because the God that you believe in is the one that you look at in the mirror. Well, I don't believe that, yeah. Then who, what's your standard? Yourself. Because you will have no one tell you what to do except you yourself, right? Well, we who are saved of the church of the living God, we have a standard, the authorized version of the scriptures. Never mind these guys like John MacArthur who talks about Bible this, Bible that. He has no standard but himself. He is his own standard. <laughs> See, when judgment is left upon you to judge what is good and evil, it shows you how inept you are to do so without God and his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. I hope you take this to heart. There's going to be quite a few links in this video, and uh, I hope you have the courage to watch some of them. If I can remember them all. <laughs> One day, Mr. Atheist, Mr. and Mrs. Atheist, one day you won't have to worry about us um, authorized version of the scripture believers, the Church of the Living God, being around here to irritate you. Because one day we're all going to go away. 
Then you're going to have to deal with these people called Christians who are Catholic, who are going to force you to convert to their ways or you're going to die. And you're going to be forced, if you want to eat that kind of stuff, if you want to, you want to survive after the Church of the Living God disappears, okay? If you want to survive during that time, you're going to have to take something in your right hand or in your forehead. And once you do that, once that time period is over, you'll know by then. And by then, it's too late. There ain't nothing worth on this earth for you trading away eternity with our Lord Jesus Christ just to serve your own flesh and pleasure. And because you think so highly of yourself that you are your own God, knowing good and evil. That's all I got to say about that.